right. Uh, we are team TNTN. Uh, this is our robot explanation. So we're going to start with the 15 inch robot. Julie. Oh, yes. Hello. This is the 15 inch robot, aka Melman. Um, we call it Melman because it's tall. Well, not right now. <laughs> um, I guess we could start with the drive. Oh, there's the spikes. But we can start with the drive base. We got the nice Odom down here. We got a little secret sauce right there. Uh, we got 2.75, uh, 450 RPM. Yeah, that was good. Fully, huh? Oh yeah, eight motors on this bad boy. Uh, the, all the gears 3D printed. And then four tractions because we got that catching strategy and we didn't want to get pushed. And throughout Worlds, I don't think there was a single team that was able to push this robot. It was kind of goaded with the sauce. Um, especially if you look at the back. Oh, the spikes got a little messed up. I don't know how this happened, but... <laughs> yeah, that... <laughs> ignore, <laughs> ignore that spike, but this spike right here, this is the good stuff. This got under, like, every single other robot. It was amazing. This one probably just broke because it's bad. Um, but then we got the nice branding up here, the TNTN, the orbital, the brain, that's mounted on a very bent bracket. Um... Then we got the wings here, which are used for deploying the flip out or the net, I guess, and also for use to deploying these bad boys because it's a little baby 15 inch. And these are the fingies. We actually, we don't know why a lot of teams didn't use these. I don't know, like, we, like, they're so good. They just open the goal up. Like, here, can we get a ball? Okay, like, here, we got a, we got a ball, right? We got a ball, and it goes in, and then, oh, the robot's not on. But if the robot was on, right? This thing, it literally just lifts up the goal, and it's just, the ball just rolled. It just, it's, it, it's already in there. It, yeah, it's that easy. Um, but yeah, the fingy's very unique, very cool. Uh, we also got the sleds here, which the TNTN <laughs> branding for some reason, but it got really messed up during Worlds. Um, they, the sleds we only really used for hang, because we never needed to cross because we're catching and shooting. Why would this one ever need to go to the other side? But yeah, now it's time for the fun part. Let's open it up and hope it opens because the track record on this thing's not very good. The wings gonna get stuck. Oh yeah, we need to move it so the wings don't hit. Yeah, okay, you know, let's go and bring it back here. Yeah, <laughs> that, that happens, but it's kind of, it just, if a ball hits this in a match, a couple balls will hit it and it comes out. Um, oh, a zip tie broke over here, so it's not very even, but. There's mesh everywhere. We just did the cost, actually. This, we spent like $70 worth of mesh throughout the entire season. Um, very well optimized. A lot of like improvements over the year. The, this robot actually didn't change much from August. So yeah, it's pretty cool to have the same robot all year. Um, but this thing, it like, yeah, let me get the ball. <laughs> it, when a ball hits it, Hopefully, like it catches it kind of like a glove and then it just rolls in really good like that. Um, and then inside, oh, again, <laughs> got some broken bands, but inside the robot, it's like fully hollow and the balls just go and out like that. And then, oh, intake is two motors direct, or not direct, but geared 600. Um, we needed to design these top stages to be used as a catcher and a blocker. So it's good at like stopping shots. It doesn't, well, if there was bands on it, obviously it'd be good at stopping shots, but it'd be like boom, 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 stops all the shots, but also has to catch ball. So it's like rigid in both directions. It's really good. Um, yeah, we also got this little hook here for hang. Uh, here, it's a little dangly. It's, it's meant to be like that. Um, we kind of need to hear it. Let's get Oh my gosh, it's not looking too good, but. So, basically, you get as far into the corner as you can. Oh. It's back. All right, we run it back. We got some new bands. Hopefully, it'll be enough. But basically, we get in the corner, we get up. Let me just make sure it's close. <laughs> <laughs> and then we activate the secret sauce, which we kind of call like the jumper. It's just a giant piston that pushes the entire robot up and gets the hang. 
I think it wins the award for most A tier hang. It's beautiful. <laughs> um, I think it hung more than the 24 inch, which has like an actual hang. But it, it like, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Anyway, um, yeah, it's a pretty simple robot, but it works really. Uh, worked pretty well. <laughs> when it flipped out. Even, well, even when it didn't flip out, it was a good, like, metabot, you know? And also, oh yeah, also, if a team was, like, match loading balls, I could just go like this and catch the balls that they shot, and I would just go put them in the goal, and I'd be happy. And yeah, that's about it. It worked good when it flipped out. When it didn't flip out, it worked sad. Yeah, now you guys could talk about... The 24. All right, so uh, first we'd like to start off by saying me and Trevor do not affiliate with the 15 whatsoever. Yep. Uh, we worked on this robot. So this is the 24. Um, this is famously known as the Shooter or Melman. Uh, Dumbo. 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 <laughs> uh, oh, I'm a Dumbo. You named them. Uh, I did name them. Yeah. That's on me. We could start with the drive base. Do you want to? Oh, yeah, let's get that drive base reveal. Real nice drive base, a lot of clearance here. You know, we got that clearance. 257 four inch, eight motor, real a fast drive train, as is meta in this game, you know. <laughs> got all the gears, nice 36 tooth gears all the way along here. And all this clearance is so that we can just, you know, go over into this corner, just drive right in. And then we can just do whatever we want in the corner without having to scrape along here, you know? Um, so if we bring it out, next thing we can look at, uh, flip it around. We got the intakes at the front here. We had very unique intakes, very change up style. Uh, we open it up, grab the ball like that, puts it in there. Um, just use half cut three inch flex wheels, the rest are 1.65, 1.625, yeah. 1.625. Um, IQ chain for that. This, uh, we have 3D printed structure up here. This is Nylon X. Nylon X. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's not Nylon. It's Mark no, what Forge. Is it? It's like Mark, Mark Forge. Mark Forge and Forge. Forge. or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, fancy. Fancy. Um, and then that's actually how we're able to match load so fast. So if we go into the match load zone. Wait, one more thing before we do that. I'm going to put a ball in there. <laughs> right? I'm just going to go get it. It doesn't care. So that's, that was really convenient for us. So we could just gr grab a ball wherever it was. But obviously, since we've won skills, we have to put it in a specific location to be fast. So it would just like, we'd place it there and then we'd do that a lot. Our cycle time was 0.7, yeah, 0.7-ish. Uh, we could go up to 0.5, but that was not very practical. Uh, for double possession reasons. Oh yeah, so we got this little guy right here. You know, this is something I've never seen any other Vex no, team do our, ever. One thing with our robotics, with our robot, is that it had a lot of unique mechs because no one really built this. Yeah, so what this is, um, is it's just a little thing on a piston that can drop down. And when we drive in here, if we turn, this bearing is rubbing along here and that combined with the wheel locks us in at the right angle and if you look over on this side as well we've got a ball bearing against the wall so that just makes it so when we drive in we're physically locked into the angle we want to shoot right in the right spot for wherever the 15 would be in match um that helped a lot with not having to rely on inertial sensors or vision sensors or any other sensors it's just hardware yeah we had we had we tried vision but then we had to like drape orange all over the back of the <laughs> yeah, 15. Yeah, that wasn't nice. It wasn't drip. Um, but yeah, those work really good. Um, we, we also have them on the other side as well so that we can do it in both sides of the field. You can for go skills. left or right for skills, yeah. Um, so moving on past the intake, the next thing we got here is the flywheel. Oh yeah, the flywheel. I don't know about the flywheel. Okay, so this flywheel is Pretty much completely custom. We made it back in like last October. Yep. Yay. Um, so we've got custom 3D printed gears. These are running a six to one ratio to get 3,600 RPM on the flywheel. 3,600 RPM on both top and bottom. There's a bottom one here. I don't know how good you can Whoa. see that on camera. Yeah, a lot of teams thought we ran single flywheel for some reason. Yeah, I don't know how that happened. But so this is four motor 3,600 RPM. 
Top flywheel is about 2.2 inch diameter. Bottom one is about, or is three inch flex wheels. Um, we've got the custom gears here just to make it fit. Um, and what these gears allow us to do is we've got this little slot here that's kind of hard to see on camera, but this slot lets us adjust the compression of the flywheel depending on how much we want. And so that's let us use the same whole flywheel polycarbonate assembly that we CNC'd out. We've been able to use the same one with different diameter flywheels. Um, and that's give us a huge amount of uh, freedom in how we can make this flywheel after the fact, how we can tune it, I should it's say. It's really helped with R&D, especially since like making a flywheel shoot one of these accurately was a tough challenge for us. But having this adjustability was really strong for us to just figure out how to make it perfect. Yeah. Uh, of the plastic. Oh yeah, so as you can see here, we have a piece of plastic right at the front here. First, shout out to Scott for coming up with this, but what this does is that we found with our flywheel inconsistencies at Queen's competition was that it would just shoot side to side and we didn't really know why. We added uh, sidewalls to the front of it, but it didn't really help too much. But what the solution was, was to have this piece of plastic right before it gets to the flywheel to center the tip of the tri-ball every time so you don't end up side to side going into it. And that actually really increased our accuracy. Just this one piece of curved plastic here. Um, also on the bottom, we have a continuous ramp. Just goes from the intake ramp across to the flywheel. Up here, we have just a piece of five wide as a top cannon. Uh, that's basically all of our cannoning. Yeah, one thing we actually did forget to mention, this intake, is tuned a lot to get the ball in the same way every time. So it doesn't look particularly special, but with the height of the flex wheels, it always intakes the ball like the same way. It always gets this tip up, right? And that's what allows us to have this piece of plastic here to align it. It's just because we know the tips up every time. And it's the same thing for the geo of these flex wheels. They just force the ball into this orientation. Um, and another thing that we have is we have these two, um, prongs here so that if the ball intakes if the ball intakes kind of not quite right it's able to flip the ball around up into the right orientation so we know that no matter what happens on the field no matter if the ball is completely just rolling around it's always going to intake with the tip up and that just gives us a whole lot more consistency a whole lot more reliable reliability on this flywheel that we didn't have without that do we want to demonstrate a shot Oh, oh yeah, um, yeah. You can catch it, Julian. Stand uh, right there. So, um, yeah, we didn't really run this at full power at, at Worlds. Yeah, this is actually only on about eighty percent power. It could go a lot higher, but the refs didn't like that. Um, I don't know why that would happen. Not like we, yeah, not like we, we hit, we hit a couple rounds. Right? If you shout out to the the Worlds recap, go watch that, and you can see exactly how many refs we hit. Also, as you saw, we brought something down at the front of the robot. That's called the Space Maker. So this is one of our other unique mechs on this robot. Uh, the name basically says it. It just creates space for us. When we're in the match load zone, we bring this down so teams can't get close to block us. It's also really good just for defense on our side of the field, uh, which can block the goal almost the full length of the front of the goal. Um, and it's very strong, very heavy. It uses two FRC pistons. Uses two massive FRC yeah. pistons here on each side. To we took them straight from 6364. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also have these standoffs at the end here. So we actually can't accidentally enter the opponent's goal at all. And we have wall riders on the side here too, just for ease of use. Wall yeah. Oh, also, it's a counterweight. Yep, it is a counterweight. That's so we got a, we got our steel here. You know, this robot hangs. It does hang. If I just drive over here, We're it up. just hangs. And it's on ball bearings for some reason for the flex. Yeah, it's, okay, well, it's nice. It just does that perfectly hanged every time. Uh, so we just have double. Don't mind the fact that this uh, steel is not actually set up properly. There we go. So if you actually saw our skills videos we saw you probably saw that we were upset after each run uh which was a bit weird but that was because this was supposed to hang at the end of each run which is only five extra points but 
Yeah. That we was still kind of tragic. It was so sad. I was so sad. It we just think, got stuck. We think it's probably because the, the skills fields like to sink and the robot is 30 pounds. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we think it just couldn't get out of the zone. And yeah. that's probably, yeah. Um, anything else? I think that's about it. Um, wedge. Oh, yeah, we have a wedge. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's also a counterweight. That's, that's another also a counterweight. <laughs> wedge. It's a little bit thick. Uh, we have a lack of custom this year. It is our first year doing VexU. We're yeah. trying to get into the swing of things, so we do apologize for that. The robots look a little jank, but... Yeah, we pitied 6364 next year. We're going to be spilling a lot more of this stuff. So don't <laughs> you guys worry about that. Oh, so... Oh yeah, Our... we got the big old clipper tanks, also from 6364. Mm -hmm. Shout out to 6364. We got... FRC, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> that's 10 tons FRC team. Um, so yeah, these are, what, 570 milliliters each, I think? Yep. So that puts us at 1140, 1.1 liters of air. It's really fun to pump up with a foot pump. It's, it's really <laughs> fun, I, I assure you. Um, Morocco. Morocco, yeah. yeah. So... I'll explain the maraca real quick. Um, let me just drop this down. So, as you can see, we've got this hang here. But if you look at it from the side, it's basically just above the back wheel. It's not actually centered. And that's because when I was talking about the flywheel earlier, we've got these big custom gears in this custom gearbox that's really nice. Except it's really giant, so we can't have the hang in the middle of the robot because the flywheel's there. So, the center of gravity is basically just right here, thanks to all this weight. Um, it didn't really affect us in match all that much. It just gave me more weight to push people with the wedge, which was nice. I like, I like pushing people. It's fun. But yeah, that was our solution, and it worked. Mm -hmm. Anything else you got, Elliot? Um, honestly, I think that's about it. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, let us know in the comments. We will yeah. possibly answer you. <laughs> no, I, I'll, 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 I'll be answering. Don't we'll, worry. We'll be there. Yeah, thanks for the really good season from everyone, all the help from everyone. Shout out to literally everyone. All of you guys have been great. A special shout out to Orbital, because they oh, yeah. they yeah. they're Orbital Research. They're like the only company that wanted to sponsor a brand new Vex U team with yeah. zero ties to any university. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, also we won skills. That was kind of cool. Yeah, we got the banner there. We got the red over there. You know, so That was something. Good job. Do we post this? There's 10 on leaks. Huh? There's 10 tons of leaks. Oh, Can you're right. We can't be leaking. Oh, okay. No sorry. leaks. No leaks. Uh, no leaks. <laughs> yeah. So if this video gets out, we'll have to we'll have to find you. All right. This is this is spanning out, and my phone's running out of storage. <laughs> Good luck in high stakes times two. See you in high stakes, actually. Yeah. See you in roundup. Well, actually, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> you won't see us because no leaks. Oh, he's right. He's right. Yeah. Why are we still recording? <laughs>